everyone, it's Hannah and welcome back to the Corner of Craft podcast. I keep almost saying the Crafty Chat podcast because that's what this used to be called. But it's not called that anymore, so I need to stop doing that. It is a Thursday, which means podcast day, but not every Thursday. That's not my usual intro. I don't know what I'm doing. I hope that you're all well. I'm coming at you today from a overcast, not that nice, uh, day in Nottingham in the UK. My name is Hannah, as I've already said. Um, I am the business owner of The Corner of Craft. I make tiny beaded stitch markers, which you will see later. And I also dye yarn under the umbrella of chromatic yarns. And all of those yarns are inspired by the tabletop role-playing game Dungeons and Dragons. Here is some of it. Beautiful. Um, the Corner of Craft podcast is just a fortnightly podcast in which I sit and talk at you for I don't know half an hour or so about things that I've been knitting crochet sometimes but very rarely all while we enjoy a delicious cup of tea if you'd like to follow me on social media please feel free let's do this here links can all be found in the description box below and also in the description box below are podcast notes I didn't mention it last week and of course I wrote them because I sometimes mention it and don't write them but last week I wrote them and then didn't mention it and uh, had a few people asking me about various things podcast notes they're there I'm going to keep getting distracted by this spot here so I'm just going to point it out now I have a spot it's really annoying it doesn't hurt it's just very present on my face the tea that I'm drinking today out of a mug that we got for Christmas we've got two of these they have really nice pointy handles. I can't hold it like that for too long because it's a very hot cup of tea. Um, today I'm drinking Bird and Blend, always Bird and Blend, not sponsored, wish I was, um, Butter Brew, which is a, such a fantastic tea, inspired by the butter beer um, from Harry Potter, but obviously not directly. Tastes like Werther's Originals. I do have to put a sweetener in it um, to get the taste otherwise it just tastes like a black tea to me but once I put a sweetener in it it tastes absolutely perfect I'm not going to take a sip because I've only just made it and it's going to be very hot very hot um yeah it's been an all right fortnight can't really complain what have I been up to not a whole lot really just the standard working um last week was filled with me dyeing up the Nitticarol yarn club sincerest apologies for the spoiler in the last podcast i just didn't think it was stupid of me but yes because of the spoiler i shared happened over a year ago i think um i just didn't think about it and i'm really sorry if i spoiled it for anyone but i'm not going to say anything else in case i spoil anything else the next, so the last month's, this month's critical role was um, Shine Bright Circus Man, inspired by Molly Mock of um, Critical Role. Critical Role is a monthly yarn club in which I dye yarn in colours inspired by uh, the online streaming program, I guess. Uh, critical Role, so I've called it Critical Role because I'm really funny. Um, and yes, you receive a skein of yarn or more. This hair or multiple if that's your speed um and it's a mystery colorway to you you know the theme before it happens but yes um i also beaded up all the mystery stitch marker clubs they've all gone out in the post they've been well received as of the yarn so thank you very much i'm glad that you like them the stitch marker club for february and the yarn club for february will both be going on sale on february the 1st at 4 p.m gmt which is london time um, so that's February the 1st, which I believe is a Saturday. Um, yeah, so that's next, not two days time, but next week. Uh, so I will not be having a podcast before that. Um, I have very limited slots for both, um, in particularly stitch markers because there's only so much beading I can do. I can feel, I can tell that I'm back after Christmas and bead weaving more because my hands are the driest things in the world especially my thumb and I keep stabbing this part of my hand. It's really fun. Um, it's a new place. I never usually stab here, right? It's always here that I get a hole in my finger, but here is a new one. Um, yes, so that will be going on sale on February the 1st. 
Knit Corral theme is Tusk Love, inspired by the raunchy romance novel um, that was found in the bookshop and heavily consumed reading wise by Jester. Tusk Love. So yeah, that's going on set very the first. <laughs> anyway, you didn't come here to listen to that spiel, did you? Well, yes, you did. Let's be honest. You definitely did come here to listen to that spiel because it's my spiel. Um, today I am wearing my Knitting is Metal tarot card. Oh, those are my bra straps, sorry. Tarot card t-shirt because I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit, I'm in a bit of a, okay, tell you what, I'm in a bit of a weird mood this week. Um, feeling a little bit flat. So I'm sorry if that comes across. I'm trying not to make it come across. But also my temperature's been a bit up and down. Um, maybe I'm illing. It's it's just also, you know, that time. Um, or has just been. So I thought I'd put a cardi on in case I get too over-enthusiastic and too warm. That way I can whip it off. But the cardi I am wearing, let's put my phone up here. Nope, let's not. Is the Anouk cardigan. Whoa, sorry. It's got these fun little bits here and buttons everywhere. These are buttons here. It's a cropped cardi, so it doesn't really go with my outfit, but I don't care. Um, yeah, this is a new cardi which I knit out of a one of those giant balls of iron weight. I want to say it's Hayfield something. Um, it used less than one ball, which is nice. The sleeves are even long enough for me if I kind of pull it down a little bit. Um, it's got the patterning across the back as well. I really like this cardi. I don't wear it much because it's mustard. I don't know why I wanted to knit. I tell you why I wanted to knit out mustard because I'm about as imaginative as a grain of salt sometimes. So um, the one on Ravelry is also knit out of mustard. But I haven't worn it in a long time. Well, I wore it New Year's Eve and I wore it during Vlogmas. But before that I hadn't worn it in a while. So I'm just going to keep wearing it, even though it doesn't quite go with jeans and a t-shirt because it's cropped. But I'm just, I'm, I'm winging it. Which is kind of what I do in life. I've been talking for almost eight minutes and haven't said anything. This is a pattern by Andy Satterland for anyone who is interested in that. Um, I really need to re-dye my hair as well, but that's not a conversation for now. That's a conversation for another time. Mm, delightful, should I say? Delightful. Never, never say delightful. Right, let's get into finished things before you click off and think that this is just me talking at you about nothing. Which, if you've watched any of my podcasts before, kind of is a little bit. Oh, I have some really exciting news that I would like to announce that I forgot to announce, and I can't believe I forgot to announce. If you follow me on Instagram, you'd already know this because last week, yes. Oh God, how is it only a month since Christmas? <laughs> it's been the longest month ever. Last week, I shared a fun little announcement with you all. I first of all shared on Instagram that I was going to be announcing something the next day and asked you to guess what it was. Um, quite a few people thought I was pregnant, which I'm unsure how I feel about, but I'm not. Um, one person guessed it, right? I will be going to, drum roll, Rhinebeck this year. I know. I'm really excited. So, that's New York Sheep and Wool Festival for those who aren't in the lingo. I'm not in the lingo, let's be honest. Um, ever since I got into the online knitting community, I have desperately wanted to go. I have so wanted to go. And um, just didn't go. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it felt like a very long way to go for just the weekend and to travel by myself and potentially be a loner. But... I turned 30 this year in September, so I thought, let's treat yourself because it might be one of the last years I can go for a while, who knows? You know, responsibilities, I have few at the moment, so I thought I would go. I mean, I can kind of trust Mario to feed Sophie the geriatric goldfish, 
Um, but yes, I will be hanging out with and basically limpeting onto um, Tristan and Christy of the Girls in the Yarn Cafe podcast. And Dragon Hold Yarns is Tristan and Yarn Cafe Creations is Christy. And they were both kind enough to let me stay with them and we're all landing at a similar time. I'm landing first, but we're all landing at a similar time. So then we can all go together at the same airport and oh, we're all staying together as well and I'm very excited for it. It's basically, I'm just gonna hang around with them a lot <laughs> because um, I've never experienced jet lag before, so I'm fully expecting it to be awful. I am going to Japan in, yeah, we've got two big holidays coming up, uh, in April, end of April for three weeks. So I will learn how jet lag feels. I fully intend on napping whenever I can, which I don't think will be much, but I think I'm just going to have to be really tired <laughs> for the weekend. Because I'm, I'm flying over Thursday and coming back on Monday, so I'm just going to be tired for the weekend and just deal with it and just sleep whenever I can. Early nights. Let's be antisocial. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. You got tea out there, do you? You must have tea. I don't drink coffee. You better have tea. If not, I can bring my own. <laughs> the most British problem I think I've ever announced. Um, but yes, I'm very excited to be going to Rhinebeck, so I need to start planning what I'm going to knit as my Rhinebeck jumpers. Because I want multiple. Um, and yeah, I'm so excited. So I really hope, like I said, this is maybe probably one of the last times I'm going to be able to go. Maybe, I don't know. My responsibilities are very few at the moment. Um, we are going to be looking at buying a house this year, so money is going to be going to other places, and yes, I am also, you know, approaching my 30s. I kind of want to start a family at some point, but thought, let's go to the States in October. <laughs> I'm very excited! Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, that's happening. But yes, if you are um, if you were on the fence about whether you were going to go or not, I would really appreciate it if you came along. I want to meet you. You know, you know, because I know I've got quite a few of you in the states who watch, both watch the podcast and purchase things from me. And I would like to meet you if you are able to make. It. If you're not able to make it, that's okay. I won't be angry at you. I'm not an angry person. <laughs> but it'll be nice to see you if you can make it. Right, let's talk about finished things. Let's get, that's all the announcements out of the way. We're 15, almost 15 minutes in and I've talked about nothing by myself. Um, I find that quite impressive because when I, I tell you what, I've been a bit off watching podcasts lately. Um, not for any particular reason, just because I've just not been watching podcasts because end of, it kind of started last year. Um, and I think it's because I've not been knitting as much. So I've not been watching as many. Uh, but I watched The Girls in the Yarn Cafe, their latest one, and they are able to talk to each other, because there's two of them, and, you know, they talk to each other, um, so they catch up and chat about whatever, and it's okay, but when I'm just talking by myself, it feels a bit weird that I'm able to talk for 15 minutes, um, and not having shown you any knitting yet. Sometimes I'm very impressed with how good my small talk skills are. finished things. Let's talk about finished things. I have one finished thing. It's got makeup on it on the collar because the time I tried it on after I blocked it I had a full face of makeup on and I got makeup on the collar so I now need to re-wash it but I finished my Garden Gate sweater. I'm not wearing it. I apologise. Um, but it's got full length sleeves. I even did the colour work at the bottom of the sleeves. It was the jumper that never ended. It's now ended. I'm a little concerned because at the bottom here, when I put it on, it could just be because I've gained a few pounds since I cast this on. It's alright, they'll come off. Um, 
apparently they will if I knit, but we won't get into that discussion because that's absolute bollyolics. Um, let's just knit for enjoyment, let's not knit for weight loss, shall we? Anyway, I would like to lose some of those pounds that I put on purely because I want to wear this jumper. I'm sorry, some washi tape just fell from somewhere. Um, yeah, but when I put it on, you can see where I've caught the floats between these. And I don't know if that's just my bad colour work knitting. It might be. Um, or if it's because it's got... Uh, it's not even got negative ease, it just fits. It's got zero ease, you know? And I don't know if that's... Well, it's not noticeable from far away, so maybe I'll just suck it up and deal with it. This is my first, like, proper full-on colour work jumper. I have knit the Zweig um, and then ruined it when I washed it. I'm really heartbroken. Um, but, yes, this is my first proper, like, full-on colour work. This is the Garden Gate sweater by um, Jennifer Ste Steingas, who's Knit Love Wool who has a plethora of gorgeous colourwork yoke jumper patterns. So if you don't like this one, there'll be other ones that I'm sure you like. It is knit out of four ply yarn, um, and it's meant to be inspired by garden, by the gates, I believe like the iron gates in Edinburgh. I could be wrong, I might be wrong, I can't remember. Um, I have knit this out of, Old Maiden Aunt is the dark colour in Lawn Dub which means blackbird. Um, and then the light gray color is chromatic yarns in moonbeam, as I like to pronounce it, moonbeam. Um, and it's a spell that I heavily use in Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, I just got six level spells in Dungeons and Dragons. It's very exciting. I also got swallowed by a giant worm. It was a bit touch and go. Anyway, not me personally, my character in Dungeons and Dragons. She's a fur bog, she's tall and fluffy, her name is Ellen, she's a druid. Yes, this jumper. Um, it, what it was, somebody messaged and asked what I thought about the pattern and how it was written and blah 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 blah. Um, tell you what, I thought it was a very easy to read pattern. This is, I think, no it's not. <laughs> Everything I say is a lie. Um, I was going to say, I think it's my first yoked, like, yoke increases, um, jumper, but it's not because I've knit the TPCT, the perfect crop top, and that's yoked also. Um, but very easy pattern to read. Have some basic, you can Google how to do short rows. It's got short rows in it. Um, I did helical knitting for the first time, which was fun. It's my first color work, so it's a little uneven. Not great, but I tried. Um, and yeah. I had to knit length to the arms because I've got gorilla arms. I should have knit extra on the body, but I'm lazy. Um, but I still have some wool left so I can rip it out and knit it longer if I find I'm not wearing it. But I have a few dresses this is, that this will look perfect over so I'm not too heartbroken. Um, I'll just wear it as a cropped, you know? But it is i find it really well written clear to understand um the charts are really nice um and clear um anything else don't think there's anything else to add any more questions if you've got any questions about the pattern let me know i'll try my best to answer them i'm no connoisseur when it comes to jumper knitting i've knit very few have i i mean i'm getting mm, yeah and i've not knit many Sometimes I need to sit and think about what I'm going to say before I say it, but I don't. But yes, beautiful. This is beautiful. I love it. I'm so proud of it. It looks fantastic. And just ignore the makeup that's here. It do Hello? It doesn't have a ribbed cuff on the, well, rib on the collar or on the sleeves got a little garter thing so it rolls over which is a nice nice touch bit different uh, you have a short amount of ribbing on the bottom which kept flipping up but I've blocked it and now it doesn't flip anywhere and it, you, you kind of make short rows so it's a bit high low at the back and yeah I really enjoyed knitting it in the end 
as much of a slog as it was and I kind of hated it for a spell but that's because I put it down and that was my error never put it down just keep knitting it well that's not true I had to knit a wedding shawl in the meantime but yes I've now finished it so I can now wear it with pride even if I couldn't wear it for Christmas next year also Rhinebeck I'm going to try my best not to talk about it all the time I can't promise anything so after last week's parade of finished objects I have one finished object but it's all I'm sorry that was really loud I hate hearing swallowing on podcasts I'm really sorry um I also can't remember what I was going to say because I got distracted by my own loud swallowing I'm gonna cut that right there the next thing that I am knitting is in my fringe field supply bag. Diddly, diddly. Got a new pin on it from Orly in Australia. Thanks. It's really cute. I love the collection of pins I have on here. This one I have made. Stuck a pin badge on it. And yeah, this is a fab one. Of course, I have, well, this is when they were still Bluebird Tea Company, but Bird and Blend, of course. And the bead shop, of course. Fueled by tea, because, of course, oh my god, my Fueled by Tea kind of matches my new mug. Foreshadowing. I've had that Fueled by Tea for ages. Anyway, that's not what you're here for. So, I am knitting, caught on my bubble. The Home Is With You shawl, which is, oh, I'm at the end of the row as well, fantastic. A shawl pattern by Kay, who is the Crazy Sock Lady of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast, um, Kay Litton. And yeah, I've made pretty good progress on it. Um, I am knitting this out of, oop, oop, yarn that I bought when I went to Alternate Universe in Bristol for my birthday. This is Art Equals Happy Yarn. It is Kim herself, who is the shop owner, who makes the yarn. It is recycled yarn, which is nice. And it is a sock weight. I will get into what recycled yarn is in a tick. Um, so this light gray color, which is so pretty, it's kind of like a bluish gray, is called Sculpted From Clay. And then this, gorgeous grey and black colour is Steve Trevor. Apparently these are both Wonder Woman references. I'm just going to plead ignorance at this one but they're just really nice colours and I thought they were really nicely together. So I picked up two each of these because they're each 50 grams, each sock weight and there are, um, you can get, well she makes them various different thicknesses so what recycled yarn is for those who haven't watched the podcast in which I talk about this or the vlog I think I talked about it is Kim gets either given or buys or finds in charity shops or whatever um, cones of wool that are usually used in factories and such for machine knitting and some of them are a bit moth-eaten some of them are very looking very sorry for themselves so she takes them cleans them up makes them look pretty and gives them a whole new lease of life by putting various strands together um, in beautiful colour coordinated patterns to make a gorgeous mild effect um, and yeah depending on how many strands are put together depends on how thick it is and I think it's beautiful. Um, she doesn't sell them online at the moment, um, you can only buy them from her shop Alternate Universe, they're very reasonable, they're only £4.50 for 50 grams which I think is great and I kind of want to buy some to knit some kind of jumper maybe like the Andrea Mary jumper you know the one is it stone crop stone something yeah. um, but yes I think they are absolutely beautiful but I did actually buy these with the intention of making this shawl which makes it even better because look at me not straying away from anything. Um, and yes, so it's made up of several sections. The first section is like this broken rib stitch. I think it's broken rib. 
or like moss stitch maybe can you tell i'm an expert i knit things i don't write the patterns um and then the next section is just a garter section and then i've moved on to an eyelet section i'm about to start a row of eyelets again um i got my tiny little corner of craft chick here hanging out keeping me company oh my ring's twisted um beady little face but yes it's just a nice triangle shawl kind of mindless but it's a bit interesting and the colors change frequently and yes i really like the wool um the pale color is so soft and the the dark color is a bit scratchier but at the same time i don't care um and i think this is going to be something that i'm going to use quite a lot i think it's going to be more of a springtime shawl as opposed to a super warm winter shawl but i'm also all right with it it will look fab with my denim jacket i'm knitting this on high higher sharps i always use high higher sharps and these are four millimeter needles on my on my interchangeables and yeah i've got little rounds of stitch markers because i enjoy these I am thinking about buying some of these and putting them together for a stitch marker in my shop because I bought them to hang off, uh, hang these off. But I find I like them better on the clippies. But um, yeah, these are just super useful. I use them all the time. So maybe, maybe. But yeah, that is uh, the first thing that I'm currently knitting. let's put that back in there the next thing i'm knitting i don't actually have in a project bag which is stupid seeing as i have so many project bags um i've just chucked it in my box of wool right now so i bought this yarn and pattern from bar am you last year at edinburgh yarn festival i've been eyeing up the pattern for a while and i thought why not buy the yarn to go with it the pattern is the brook lime hat and um Yes, it is. It was designed out of this yarn, so I decided to knit it out of the yarn, uh, which is Bar Ramu Pip Colour Work. It's very reasonable, which I like. Um, I haven't actually used this one yet. This is going to be my pom pom, which is in the colour Castleford, which is just a really nice sort of heathered purple. Very nice. And then I have knit with this one, as you can see. This is in, no, this isn't the colour Castleford because it says Lot Castleford. But I don't know what colour this is because they all say Castleford on them. Well, that purple colour's nice. I then went for the teal colour because this is my palette in life. It's teal purple. And then for the colour work portion, because I'm knitting colour work again, I've knit it out of this gorgeous charcoal grey and this just white. Oh, so this is coal. This is White Rose, this one is Lotherton, and this one is Bishop Thorpe. I found where the colours are. Um, but yes, it's this gorgeous charcoal grey and then this kind of natural undyed. And yeah, I'm currently in the process of knitting this. I'm making the medium size because I was kind of in between sizes and thought it would be better to have it be a touch smaller so it could stretch out than it be too big. I could be wrong, and if it's wrong, then this is gonna be gifted to someone with a smaller head than me, which is not difficult to find because my head is approximately the size of a giant's. Um, but yeah, maybe it's not the size of a giant if I'm between the medium and the large. But yes, so I did the cuff, which was beautiful full colour and yes I am midway or I'm almost finished the first repeat of the pattern it's really nice to knit it's really fun I haven't knit it for a couple of days not for any particular reason other than we've had D&D &D and yesterday I <laughs> yesterday I spent two hours three hours a long time <laughs> just twisting yarn <laughs> i didn't get to knit i was like oh quick i'll do this i'll watch a few episodes doctor who i'll do this 
and then I can knit. And then I looked at the clock and I was like, oh, it's half 11. I guess I'll go to bed. <laughs> it must be three hours. I think I started just before Mario went to bed. He went to bed at about quarter to nine. So, yeah. Yes. Really fun. I've got my little panda pal hanging out, keeping me company. He's so cute. So, yes, this is to demonstrate you can use them as end of round markers as well. Also, I just love using them. But, yeah. Um, I'm really excited to knit this actually. I'm trying to get my stash down a bit this year. Um, because some of the yarns that I have, I feel like my taste has changed in the three years since I've been building my stash. So, yes, my taste has changed a little bit. I mean, I'm not, I'm having a bit of a deep stash. Um, I'm not culling the lot because I don't want to, but I am having a bit of a de-stash because I just, yes. So that'll be coming on Saturday in the de-stash section of my shop. Um, also, because I really want to knit with some of my own colorways that I'm coming out with, um, because I feel like I'm developing quite a lot as a dyer, I feel like I'm improving. And um, I really like the colours I'm coming out with and want to knit with them, basically. I didn't swatch for this hat, which could be an error. I used 2.5 millimetre needles on the bottom. And then I'm using 2.75, yeah, for the colour work portion. And this is 100% British wool, spun and dyed in Yorkshire. It's not super wash, it is very rustic, as the folks say, and I feel like I'm about to sneeze. No, I'm okay. Um, yes, it is quite a rustic wool, but I don't think it will bother me. But it does mean that if I, it is too small and I have to gift it, I'm going to have to think about who I gift it to. Because, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be super warm because of all the colour work. It's all very close colour work, which is nice and fun to knit. And I've worked out how to knit colour work holding both of my uh, I May Flicker. Always, always sounds sexual. I am a flicker, but I think I've worked out a way of how to hold the wool and still, instead of in both hands, because when I hold it in both hands, I hold it as though I'm crocheting, which causes such cramp. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I can use my right hand for both, and it's just much easier. This is about now. Well, when, once I get into the groove of it, it's much easier, because it's not going to be easier now. No, I could be wrong. But yes, I'm really enjoying this knit. I think it's kind of exactly what I needed. More colour work. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. That's it, that's all I'm knitting. I don't have any socks on the go. I think I'm broken. Um, ooh, I may cast these on, because they're pretty cute. Um, this is by Giddy Yarns. It is the Strawberry and Vanilla Cupcake colour. Last year I did a, um, I believe this was March, she did a, like a cup, she did a cake yarn club and she collaborated with people and I made stitch markers for it, I made a really cute little strawberry and she dyed up the yarn and came up with a recipe for the strawberry vanilla cupcake and sent me the colourway so it's super cute, um, I don't know if I'll use the mini for it. I think I might just knit the sock, but we, we shall see. It's either that or I knit a really cute baby jumper. I have three babies coming in my life this year and none of them are going to know what the gender is. And that doesn't matter, I know, but what's the likelihood they're all gonna be boys? Yeah. <laughs> 
these are really cute though. Look how cute. It's such a beautiful colour. So yeah, I may cast these on a sock next. So many options. So many options. I also want to knit a three colour shawl out of this. I had some people ask for these in the shop for this week's shop update. I'm almost out of purple. <laughs> I didn't plan very well. Um, I'm almost out of purple and I'm almost out of mustard. So, yeah. I have seen, I tell you what, the sorrel jumper, my God. I've seen that all over the gram. Um, and it's a fade held double with fluff. So, I think I might maybe even i might oh I'll tell you what might go if i maybe put some purple in it somewhere i need to put some purple maybe not mm, it might be too blue it's too blue i take it back it's too blue i need a fourth color in here i'm not very good at putting fades together i can do three three colors fine four i struggle five Ugh. Um, I could try and do a darker one. Because that would look really cool. Held with like black mohair. I would probably just get some more Kid Silk Haze or something. Something commercial for the mohair. I'm not brave enough to dye mohair. I am quite the wimp. But yes, I'm going to stop talking about unrelated things. I guess it's not. It's kind of next cast on. Um, I really, I found last night on my late night scrolling of Instagram after I went to bed. I need to stop looking at my phone. I found, although I don't, because I found a new jumper pattern called Elf Mail. And it's, it's a broken seed stitch, but it's like two colour. And it's meant to be like a stash buster, but I don't think I want to stash bust. I was actually thinking about holding, not that one this colour and this colour or doing like this is like the main colour and this is the contrast to be like boom because I think that would be really cool this is maddening darkness this is I don't I dyed this last year and had it as like one off in my bargain bin for shows and then realised how much I loved it so tried to recreate it and added a couple of extra colours in and it's so fun and summery which I think is kind of what I need I'm at that point of January now where I'm just like, ugh. Um, but all oh, this would look quite nice with it too. But maybe the contrast wouldn't be enough. This is Wraith. Manning Darkness, I think I need to tweak slightly because it's not as dark as I've done it before. But I know I can't work out why. But um, yes. So Elf Mail, which just looks like a really nice pattern. I think it'll be quite fun. Just like a nice little loose, loosey goosey jumper. Yeah. Cause some of the other patterns I want to fit or I want to make are more form fitting and therefore I don't know what size to knit right now. Maybe that's also why I'm feeling down. I really want to cast on a jumper but I'm not feeling the most body positive about myself right now. So I don't really want to cast on a jumper. You feel the struggles? You feel the struggles. So maybe the elf male will um, give me the boot on the backside that I need. Anyway, you're not here to listen to me talk about my insecurities. I'm having a shop update on Saturday, so let's talk about that. So, next shop update is on Saturday, the 25th of January at 4, no, 12 p.m. GMT. I'm trying a different time this week. I'm not going to do it this time every week, but it's at midday this week, um, which is noon British time, just to give... Um, people in Australia a bit of a fighting chance at buying things so they don't have to set their alarm for four in the morning because that's never fun. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll try it and if it doesn't work out for most people then that's okay we tried it. Uh, so let's go through stitch markers first. I asked on Instagram which stitch markers you would like to see so yeah these are all your requests. These stitch markers are hand beaded they also can be progress keepers. Um, they are hand beaded by me I make them all. Um, they are sewn together one by one, made up of tiny glass beads. Um, and yeah, using either square stitch or brick stitch, that might mean nothing to some of you. But it means that they are extremely durable and very lightweight. And they are my favourite stitch markers to use because I'm biased. 
it's really hard not to keep loads but the first ones I'm going to have in my shop are nondescript police boxes so I don't get sued by the BBC uh, they all come on earring findings like this so they can be stitch markers as you saw earlier but also clip onto your knitting as you also saw earlier or if you want you can wear them as earrings as I have done before but yes super cute love these nondescript police boxes I've got quite a few going in um, this week I made sure to make extra because I know that they went quickly last time Next up, because love day is around the corner, I made some tiny pink hearts. I'm also going to have these in purple and a turquoisey blue. I just haven't made them yet. That's this afternoon's job. And along with the request for the hearts, I also bought the TARDIS, not TARDIS, nondescript police box. I also got requests for some flower crown sloths. So they will be coming. They're just little shiny sloths with little flower crowns on their head. What's wrong with that bead? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with it. It's just how the light is shining on it. Okay, good. And along with the flower crown sloths, I also have some not non-floral sloths going in. Very sweet. As always, I have head... Well, not always... Uh, but I have hedgehogs going in as well. These are always a popular choice. The teeny tiny feet and the little hedgehog nest. Super cute. Really cute. I've also decided to make some tiny pigs. I designed this pattern last year for January's Stitch Marker Club but added a flower crown to it because why not? Uh, last year was Year of the Pig so I thought it was appropriate for January's Stitch Marker Club. Uh, but yes. There's little piggies coming in the shop too. He's very sweet. He's made up of cream and like a dusky pink and it's kind of shiny. Very sweet. As you saw earlier, I also make pandas and I had a request for pandas. So they will be coming in the shop as well. They're one of my faves. I'm not even a huge, I'm not, I'm not. Who's not a panda person, let's be honest, but they're still one of my faves. Black cats was a request. So they are coming to the shop with their big old green eyes, very sweet. And along with the black cats, I also have some more ginger cats coming in because this was also heavily requested because a few of you missed out last time. And then finally, this has been this was requested by two people, so I might need to make extra pineapples. This was part of the Stitch Marker Club last year as well. But I've decided to bring it to the people. The ananas. Fun fact. I had a... Well, I've got a few friends called Hannah because it's a very popular name. But one of my friends called Hannah who was in my A-level French class. Um, my French teacher used to refer to us as Liz Annas. And so we decided to become Liz Ananas. We were the pineapples. It didn't stick. But it was quite funny for that one lesson. And now I think of her whenever I say Ananas. I don't talk to her anymore. Shame. Anyway, yarns. I have some coming to the shop in several bases. I just need to remember what yarn is in what base. <laughs> I've had a really productive dye week. I had the breakthrough thought of if I dry up and put away the dishes on the dish rack, I have a whole extra space and it has led to very productive dyeing. I can have things soaking while something's happening and something's in the oven and then Mario got me two extra trays to go in the oven and it's been fantastic weather all week. So they've been like outside and cooling so I can get more. I've been, I've had my most productive dye day. I mean, it's still only 48 skeins, which isn't that many in the grand scheme of things, especially when I talked for four hours to Tristan the other night and she said that if she pushes herself she can do about 170. I was like, oh wow, no I can't. Um, I mean she's also got a studio and works obscene hours. Um, it's in long days, but yes. I'm trying to remember what I have on what base going in the shop. 
So let's start with this one. This is only going to be on Merino for now. Um, because I'm also trying to dye yarn for Yorkshire Yarn Fest, which has changed location, actually. For those of you planning on going to Yorkshire Yarn Fest, let me talk about that real quick. Yeah. It's not at the that farm anymore. I'm really good at being organised. Yorkshire Yarn Fest is now at the Poppleton Centre in Poppleton, Nether Poppleton. Um, on Main Street, uh, Y0266 JT. It's on at the same time, and it's still free entry, and it's still my first show of the year. So, I actually need to update my spreadsheet so I actually know how much yarn I have. Um, but I'm currently trying to dye yarn for that as well, so it's a lot. Um, so I don't have as much coming to the shop as I would like, but I've got a few bits. So. On Merino I have this one which I still haven't got a name for. Someone uh, last year or in the summer suggested I call it Aura of Vitality and that's quite a good name because it's got these fantastic bright pops of neon speckles and it's wonderfully summery pale turquoise colour with just like kablam! Pow! Um, I sound really unenthused but yes. Also on Merino I have a couple of skeins of Spirit Guardians coming in the shop, which is a beautiful pale pink with charcoal grey. And I've got on both, oh, on everything actually. So this looks very similar to this, but is not the same. Um, this is Clairvoyant, Clairvoyance, Clairvoyance, uh, which is a spell in D&D. And I've got this on Merino. I've got this on Spa. Oh, my Merino base is 85% Merino, Superwash Merino, 15% nylon. This is the Sparkle base, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 20% nylon, and 5% uh, Lurex. So sparkly. I've also got it on my Sturdy Sock base, which is 7525 superwash bfl and nylon and i've also got it on my sturdy dk base but that's in the bag um which is 100 percent superwash bfl but it's this beautiful mint green with speckles of yellow and pink and purple yes using up the last of my purple <laughs> let's pop them in there because i've talked about them talked about them talked about them wonderful um i also have birthday cake column coming in because people seem to love it so i have a hair in this one there we go cool. so this is on merino sock as well it's a gorgeous sort of cream undyed and then it's also got areas of like <clears throat> taupey brown cake color with obnoxious speckles all over it in every colour I can think of. But more like, not not the nice dainty speckles, we discussed this last time. The more chaotic brand of speckle, which is my personal aesthetic. Um, but we've also got that on the, the sparkle. Ooh, there you go, you can see the kind of cakey colour a bit better here. We've also got that on the sturdy sock. For some reason these have come out way more blue, the sturdy socks, than some of the others, but I must have been heavy handed with the turquoise. And then I've also got it on sturdy DK. I love how this looks. I think it looks beautiful. Um, but yes, so the merino is best for people who are a bit sensitive to softness of wool, because this is like straight for kitten. Um, this is BFL, so I think it's fantastic to wear. It doesn't pill as easily, makes for really great socks, very hard wearing. And then this is just fun because it sparkles. And yes, Maddening Darkness. I need to count how much I've got. I may have only dyed show stock for that. That seems foolish. I can dye more. So I'm going to have this on Merino in the shop as well. Kind of like a tonal grey. On the BFLs, it's much more solid, but on Merino, for some reason, it 
merino takes dye very differently so it's much more variegated whereas on this it's much just more tonal it's my attempts at solids i'm not very good at it and i'm not ashamed to say it there are people that do wonderful solids out there and i'm not one of them but i'm trying i'm learning i'm doing um and then i've also got wraith which is this gorgeous color with neon speckles oh my god and it's like grays and charcoals with neon green and yellow and so beautiful but yes love that love it right but yeah that's everything that's come to the shop 12 p.m midday i'm gonna have the fun of photographing all of them tomorrow i'm sure the weather is gonna be shocking because we've had all of the nice weather this week um while all the yarn was drying so what's tomorrow meant to be cloudy sun i can handle cloudy sun we can do that we don't want glorious sunshine we just don't want dark <laughs> we can handle cloudy sun um, but yes, I'm also going to have some de-stash yarn going in the shop, so I have a full de-stash section for that, so be sure to check that out, because um, I just want to get some of this down a little bit, and yeah, I think that's about it. So yes, feel free to check the shop if you want to. Life stuff, what's been happening? Not a whole lot. Um, been playing Dungeons and Dragons, we've played twice since I last spoke to you. I almost died twice, I got down to eight hit points, which is very stressful, considering I start out with 80 odd, now 90, I'm level 11 now, and also used Wild Shape, so it's a little stressful that I was hit for so many hit points. That's okay, I'm still alive, just about. Also, all the other characters in the last session was really good because we did a bit more of the role-playing aspect of it, which always sounds kinky, but it's really not. Um, I've talked about this before, but my character talks at like 100 miles an hour about why she's very much why say it in 10 words when I can say it in 100. But it's quite fun because now the characters, both the ones that my fellow players play and also the non-playable characters npcs that mario plays um all have just like just started to cut me off <laughs> which is really funny and totally acceptable uh, but yeah i got swallowed by a giant purple worm which is less than ideal um but yeah we killed the did we kill the worm no it, we just injured it to the point where it threw me up it was fine what else has been happening I met up with a couple of my friends, and that was always nice. It's always nice to meet up with friends. I think I need to do that a bit more. I think that's why I've been feeling a bit down lately. I've been feeling a bit lonely, maybe. I've just been sitting in the house quite a lot, and um, after I do that for a certain length of time, it just it runs you down a bit. Um, I shared a thing on Instagram stories the other day that was like, working from home. When you first work from home, oh, this is great. I can work in my pajamas and then after a year or so just like oh I really hope that that pigeon comes by so I can say hello I have full-on conversations with Sophie the geriatric at goldfish um don't know if she appreciates them but she doesn't complain too loudly so could be worse but yes um I can't really think of anything else I want to share I tell you what would be a great elf male that would be a really good off male jumper. Maybe I will. I'll have a think about what colours it could go with. Oh my goodness, my tummy just rumbled so loudly. What time is it? Oh, it's 20 to 1 and I haven't eaten yet today. <laughs> that might be why. Um, but yes. Plans for the upcoming fortnight. Once again, there's not a whole lot planned i'm meeting up with one of my friends and we're discussing businessy things next week which is always nice um well yeah one of the exciting things i did is i skyped with tristan for four hours while we discussed rhinebeck and then i booked my flight to go um that was really exciting i'm really excited about it i've never been to the states before so it should be really good fun even if i am exhausted the whole time just be patient with me if you see me I've been told that on Saturday we're just basically going to camp out on the hill 
and meet loads of people. So I'm really excited about it. So yeah, I do need to get some of this down before I go as well. And stalk the ladies' shops to see if there's anything I want to buy for them to bring along with me to save me postage and customs. Because Jesus Christ. Postage from the States is ridiculous. Because there's so much yarn I actually do want to buy that I think is absolutely stunning, but I can't, I cannot justify it when postage is almost as much as the yarn and then I have to pay customs on top of it. It's so painful. But it's okay because it means I support UK dyes which is always nice. I'll just keep burying my head in the sand about Brexit because let's not talk about it because nobody wants to because bollocks. And yes. I'm gonna go because I need to edit this and get it uploaded. Oh, The Sims Tiny Living's come out. I'm very excited. You can now have a tiny house. I tried to build a tiny house. I'm not very good at it. So I think I need to practice a bit more. <clears throat> I'm often not good at things first time around. So we shall see. But yes, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, it would mean the world to me if you subscribed. Um, that just means that my videos pop up in your subscription feed on YouTube whenever I post. And if you click the little notification bell or the little bell that comes up next to you, the subscribe button after you click it you'll be notified on your device then i upload or i go live or whatever <coughs> my voice has gone weird i'm talking too much if you'd like to follow me on social media please feel free links can all be found in the descri description box below along with podcast notes in the corner of craft ravelry group where i'll link to all the patterns and whatnot and please feel free to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it it costs you nothing but helps to get my video out there into the youtube sphere a bit more i honestly thought this was going to be a short podcast obviously i'm very chatty anyway thank you very much for watching and i will see you very soon in my next video Whenever that will be, hopefully in a fortnight, which is the, today's the 23rd, 6th of February, will be out of January, finally, oh my god, see you later, bye! <laughs>